In this video, we're going to mostly be focusing on the wonders of automation. But before we do that, a couple of final features I want to show you inside of Soundation. One of those features is the visibility of the master channel. And the master channel is just the sum of all of the other channels that we have going in a project. So it's taking the level of all of these, summing them together at the master. And so what we see on the meters is directly correlated to whatever our master channel uh, fader is set to. So if we watch this, and take a look at the meters, or we crank it. The reason I haven't shown you the master channel up until now is because it's always good practice in any digital audio workstation to work with your master channel at Unity. And inside of a digital audio workstation that gives you number readouts, it's going to be sitting right at zero. So 0.0, .0 right at that ceiling. And that's going to give us the most accurate representation of what's really going on. If you go to your master channel and you pull it down because things are too hot and you're getting clipping on some of the channels, that's not going to fix that problem. You always have to go back and fix it at the source. In theory, you could always turn this up if you wanted to. That's not really that big of a deal. However, again, it kind of throws everything out of balance, especially when you have uh, numeric readouts on your given audio channels. Because if you wanted everything to be up by 3 dB, you should just take every single fader and pull it up by 3 dB. So that's why I haven't covered the master channel. However, it's very useful when it comes to automation. And we'll get that back to that in just a second. The other feature I haven't shown you yet is a really fun one, and that's the ability to reverse audio clips, or you can even reverse some MIDI clips. However, if you have spent a really long time programming in a MIDI clip and then you decide to reverse it, I don't know, may not work out for you. So let's listen to this in the context of the loop right now. Now I'm going to inject 10 cc's of adrenaline in the brachial artery. I mean, maybe for some kind of strange counterpoint that works, it sounds cool. However, it's not really going with the flow of this track in any way. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the audio clip itself. I'll zoom in a little bit and I can then select reverse clip. And what this is going to do is it's going to flip it around. So we can now listen to this in reverse. <laughs> And then what I think I'll do is pull this in so I can just snap this to two bars. And now what I think we'll be doing is working with automation to kind of build this up into something totally new, unique, and interesting. Okay, so right now we don't have access to any automation controls and that's because we are zoomed too far out. What I have to do is take the vertical slider over here and zoom ourselves right in until the point where we're able to read automate display off. And let's say I want to do a gentle fade in here for the track. How am I going to be able to pull this fader level up to zero? How can I do that? Well, I can use automation. And what I mentioned before when we were looking at the simple device is if I want something to control this filter all the time without me having to manually click and drag, I can use the filter envelope. Automation gives me the ability to kind of set that manually okay inside of the computer using lines and points and it's really handy because if we think about this envelope here all we have are the attack decay and release stages especially for time but what if i want multiple stages what if i want the filter to open and close in a different way five or six different times i would have to use automation i'm also not limited to whatever built-in times they have here so let's say it's a second with automation i could make that filter rise go for 10 seconds if i wanted to and we'll take a look at that as we go through so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to automate and I'm going to choose the parameter that I want to control and in this case I'll choose volume and you see what's happened is we now see this little line and this white line going through is where we're at right now so I don't want to screw up that too much and what I'm going to do is I'm going to click to create a point here all right and then I'll take a point at the very beginning and I'll just drag this one down and now that I have this set up, we should be able to hear a nice smooth fade in over these first four bars.
And so that's really the principle behind automation. It seems so simple, but you can do a million different things with it. And the one thing I'll point out is that inside of Soundation, we all have access to the exact same loops, the exact same instruments, the exact same sounds. And using automation is really going to be able to make to allow you to come up with something that's truly creative and unique to you. And that's what we'll do with this reversed audio clip here. We'll add in a bunch of different effects and maybe automate them at different points to, to come up with something rather unique. So let's listen back to this again. And maybe I'll start by taking the stretch control and pulling this out to make it a bit longer. Okay, that's cool. That will work for me. And I'm just going to go in and load in a few different effects. Okay, reverb, delay, phaser, equalizer, and maybe the last thing I'll put on here is a secondary delay. And then just to top it all off to control everything, I'll add in a filter. Okay, great. And I'm going to start by bypassing everything minus the first effect. And so that's what we're going to work with to start, which is this reverb here. And let's just listen back to it. <laughs> Okay, so what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to make this sound as though it's growing and increasing over time by using the reverb. And so what I'll start by doing is going in here to my automate display. And you can see we now have every control that we're allowed to automate. And I'll pick reverb dry to start. I'll click and I'm just actually going to pull the dry all the way down. And then with the wet, I'm going to do the exact opposite. I'm going to start at zero. I'm just going to yank that all the way up. We can listen to it. Also use the volume to fade this up. All right, great. And if we solo it one more time. All right, great. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the video. I'm going to go in, I'm going to automate all sorts of controls on here and we'll come back and hear what we were able to turn this simple audio clip into. All right. So I've gone in, I finished this out and you'll notice that it's not something I could probably use in this particular loop. But if I was going for something that was a little bit more ambient and soundscapey, this would fit right in. And you'll notice that it, even if somebody had the exact same audio clip, even if they reversed it, there's no way that they would come up with this exact same sound that I've generated here. And for me, a lot of times, that's what it's all about. It's about doing something very creative, very unique, and something that other people just simply can't replicate. So I have all of my different channels up here, so you'll be able to watch some of the different parameters moving around as we go through this automation. And we can just go back and take a listen to this in solo so you can see just how powerful automation can really be here. I'm <laughs> 
All right, there you go. I hope you found that kind of interesting. I know that for many people that might not be super practical, but there's a lot of other practical applications of automation, creating your own filter sweeps, adding a little bit extra delay at the end of a four bar loop, all of those things you're going to achieve with automation. So you can always keep it very practical, very simple. Or if you want to go a little more experimental, you can follow my lead here and kind of do something like this. All right, take care.